What's up everybody, this is Hemorrhoid, aka Deep Fryer, bringing you one last Super String video today, or whatever day it falls on when I get this edited and released. But anyway, we're going to do Abyss Stage 34 today. So let's jump in. Uh, this stage is kind of near and dear to my heart. I had a, a bit of trouble on this stage when I was uh, a very new player, and I had to build one unit. Uh, one specific unit just to clear this stage, and that unit was recommended to me by the unofficial Superstring uh, Discord community. So um, I'll put a there is a link in the description to that Discord community. So feel free to come by, say hi, um, uh, greet everyone. Everyone is super nice and super helpful, and you can make you can even make it your home if you'd like. There's a lot of really cool people there. But anyway, the unit that I built just for this Abyss stage is Aikawa, and the reason is, and actually I forgot to show you guys the additional threats, the enemies are granted with barrier at every single turn. Now this can be a little daunting at first until you figure out, well there are a couple different ways that you can deal with this, you can dispel or something like that, or you can just uh, brute force your way through it. But another really, really good option is is a bomb team, damage over time team. I believe we used a similar team on uh, floor 30. Uh, but the team I used to clear this stage originally was Aikawa, uh, Kyra. I don't know if it's Kira or Kyra, but I like Kyra. It sounds a bit exotic to me or something. But this is the team that I cleared it with originally. I used a little uh, a Munsu. Um, I think he was only level 45, I've got him at 50 now, but, but anyway, Munsu was certainly not a super strong unit for me at the time, but I used him for the bombs, and the tank I used for this stage was Kang Suki because she can go immortal and taunt the entire enemy team, and that kind of helps you, you know, ride things out and, and give your damage over time a chance to do its thing, because the bombs especially take a couple of turns. Now I know I could bring Miss Huang and detonate the bombs uh, quickly, but I like to use this same original team that I cleared it with all those months ago for nostalgia, and plus, you know, I like to try to um, give myself a bit harder of a time when I'm doing some of these lower, well I won't say lower abyss stages, but these um, mid-range abyss stages, I suppose. Um, and actually, uh, let me think here. I better make sure I have the right EX weapon on Munsu because it is critical. It is critical. It is critical that that he has the bomb gun. Uh, just because I'm, I'm focusing on bombs in this stage. Let's see here. Let me double check. Oh, okay, I'm glad I checked. I did need to switch his EX weapon. Okay. Alright, fantastic. We are ready to go. Sorry to waste you guys' time. I forgot to double check that before I started recording. So let's, uh, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's get in here and let's start killing some goblins. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you're staying safe out there. A lot of crazy things going on in the world these days. So stay safe and uh, use wisdom in every situation. Words to live by from Hemorrhoid. Okay. Now, there are a couple of different options here. With Kyra, we can open with Bomb or we can open with Silence. Um, I, I believe when I very first cleared this stage, I opened with Silence, which my units are probably strong enough now to where I could open with the bombs, but once again, for those nostalgia points, I'm going to try to kind of simulate a little bit uh, what I did the first time I cleared this stage. Okay, we got the AoE taunt. Oops. Tell my Munsu is the weakest agent. Uh, 
He goes quite late in the turn order. Now we're going to use the AoE bomb for Munsu. Oh, we missed the boss with that bomb. That's unfortunate. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, now, let's throw down some bombs with Kyra. I love Kyra, by the way. Great unit. I think she's underrated myself, especially if a person um, were to, to max her. I think that silence would hit a lot more reliably. Um, I'm going to put burn on the boss, I suppose, since the boss has the most hit points. You want that burn debuff to have a chance to do some work for you. So, I'm... You kind of want to lay that burn on the enemy with the highest hit points so that each turn that burn has a chance to work. Now, um, since I'm relying almost completely on the debuffs, I'm just going to try to heal up Munsu and help him survive just a little bit longer to help us with a little bit more damage. Okay, now we have an opportunity to confuse. With Kyra, I'm going to confuse this uh, skeleton so that hopefully he doesn't uh, stun anyone. I, I believe he has stun, if I remember correctly. Okay, this skill either inflicts bomb or detonates bomb. So I'm going to go ahead and inflict. I'm sorry, detonate the bomb. The bomb's on the boss. Try to stun the boss. Very good. We got the boss stunned. That's what I was looking for. Um, at this point, we're pretty much just waiting for the bombs to do their thing. Okay, now, Kang Suki has entered her immortal state. It cannot be dispelled, so we have Kang Suki for two turns to help us tank, and her cooldowns are also reset. So we can throw down another AoE taunt to try to help our team stay alive. And... Okay, in this scenario, all of the mobs have a little bit of their shield left, and I notice this goblin here, on the next to far left, has no shield left and very low on hit points. So I'm going to use Kyra to try to finish him off, and there we go. Now, you kind of want to try to pick off the ones with the lowest hit points first. Because once you're only down to one or two mobs, you know, you can, it's easier to, to uh, force your way through their shield when there's only one or two mobs on the screen. Alright, we can put a little bit more burn on the boss. Alright, Kang Suki is gone, but that's alright. Um... I should probably just keep going DPS with the boss, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and silence the boss um, one more time, just to make sure, just to prevent any kind of funny business, and if you've played this game for very long, you are well aware that the RNG can certainly get up to some funny business quite often. Now we can also confuse the boss. There comes that shield back. See, that's why you want to be careful that you don't become too overconfident with some of these Abyss mechanics. They can start to surprise you. Okay, we've definitely got this now. Look at all those debuffs on the boss. We're just The boss is just uh, biding its time at this point. It is only a matter of time. So we're just going to go ahead and call this one a win. So I hope this guy, uh, this gave you guys maybe some ideas for some of these um, abyss stages that start to get just a little bit tougher. Not too bad. This one's still, for the most part, fairly easy. Uh, wow, 500 gene maps. That helps. Those gene maps are a very rare resource in late game. Gene maps and nanos. Um, experience is also a um, valuable resource for a long time. Eventually, once you start getting your units maxed out, the, the genes and the nanos become a whole lot more important. But anyway, there, there you guys have it. That's Abyss 34. Uh, we, we will start 35 next time. And um, 
yeah, I've got a co-op instructional video coming out later this week, so you guys be sure to check that out when it comes out. Hopefully I've got some tips for you that may help you with your co-op performance. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. This is Hemroid, out! Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just want a picture of a god dang hot dog. Ah, uh, 이거 먹고 힘내세요. 